In this episode, we bring you activities that are not only physically engaging, but have an added social component to them. We look at competitive team sports, its origins, and how it has developed into the modern team sports we know today, with a focus on the more popular team sports, such as basketball and football. Join us as we show you some basics on how to get started. There is a saying that goes, the more the merrier. This is especially true if your goal is to work out and be healthy. You'll find that physical activity is more enjoyable when you apply it under the concept of team sports. A team sport is a sports activity wherein a group of individuals form teams that work or play under a common goal. Usually, that goal is to win against the opposing team by scoring more goals or points. Playing with a team helps you develop your sport at a faster pace because your coach or teammates monitor you. Winning is also a great motivation to train to be physically stronger and to improve skills. You can also compare and share tips with your teammates on how to further improve your game. Team sports not only help you physically, but socially as well because playing with a team will require you to communicate, plan, and strategize with other people. The social component in playing team sports develops camaraderie, sportsmanship, cooperation, and leadership qualities. Depending on the type of sport, the various constant movements can provide exercise for your whole body. Two of the most popular team sports include basketball and football. Although these sports have different rules, they generally involve back and forth running and whole body movements, which last for a considerable period of time. This continuous activity has aerobic benefits for the body, and not to mention improves a person's agility, dexterity, alertness, and reaction time. Although the rise in team sports is a recent innovation in history, there are some sports which can be traced to certain ancient cultures, as contests of skill and strength have been prevalent among different civilizations. In ancient Greece, Harpasin was a game played that roughly resembled the ball in the goal format of modern competitive sports. A leather ball was either kicked or passed around until it reached a goal line, thus scoring a team one point. The other team on the opposing side would try to prevent their opponents from scoring, and vice versa. This early form of team sport featured similar objectives as most team sports today, wherein opposing teams try to outscore each other by means of reaching a goal. In 12th century England, this game of kicking and passing the ball was adopted as a pastime for the aristocracy, albeit still not having the standard rules we have today. In the 1800s, several English public schools adopted the game and devised their own rules. The various rules or codes, as they were referred to, took shape and gave birth to the different types of football that we know today, such as rugby, American football, association football, or soccer. The school's adoption of sports led to the formation of local sports teams and gave rise to inter-school sporting events or leagues. Eventually, the popularity of professional competitive team sporting events grew with national and international leagues being formed. Since the 1900s, team sports like basketball, volleyball, and football were staples of the modern Olympic Games. Team sports, particularly football and basketball, are already ingrained in the global culture. With supporters from all over the world, following championship games and players. Football. Football, or soccer, as it is less commonly known, is arguably the most famous competitive team sport. Football is a team sport where teams are composed of 11 players each. The goal of each player is to kick or propel the ball by using the feet, limbs and head to land the ball inside a goal to score points. Basic skills in football. 
Number one, controlling the ball. In football, the ball stays in the ground during play as the players are restricted by the rules from touching the ball with their hands. As such, using the feet and limbs to control and juggle ball movement is the first important skill in playing football. Number two, running. With a very large field, players of football must be able to run considerable distances all the while maintaining possession and control of the ball at all times. Number three, dribbling. Dribbling is how a player moves and controls and maneuvers a ball through obstacles, usually an opposing player, while running. Number four, passing. Passing is the act of kicking and propelling the ball with the intent of transferring possession of the ball to another player to move forward and set up a play for a goal. Number five, shooting. Shooting is the act of dispatching the ball via kicking kneeing, or heading it with the intention of getting the ball to the opposing team's goal. Shooting requires not only strength, but critical timing and accuracy as well. Health benefits from playing football include Number one, increase in aerobic capacity and cardiovascular health. Number two, lowering of body fat and improvement of muscle tone. Number three, builds the body strength, flexibility, and endurance. Number four, increases the strength of muscles and bones. Another popular competitive team sport is basketball. Dr. James Nye Smith invented basketball in 1891 as an indoor sport that can be played during winter. Originally, the game was played using peach baskets nailed to a balcony and a soccer ball that was tossed among players. The goal of the teams was to shoot the soccer ball inside the basket for points. Although much of the rules and the equipment that we know now are modernized versions of the original game, much of the core gameplay remains the same. A standard game of basketball under modern rules pits two teams of five active players each. The teams move the ball around by running and dribbling and passing among players. Their goal is to transport the ball and shoot it through a hoop. Every successful shot through the hoop is considered a point, and the team with the most points at the end of the given time wins. Basic skills. Number one, dribbling. Dribbling is the act of bouncing the ball on the floor while moving around the court with the ball. It is an integral skill in playing basketball as dribbling is part of the fundamental rules of basketball as a game. One must have a constant rhythm of handling and bouncing the ball whilst moving around during gameplay. Number two, shooting. Shooting is the act of releasing the ball either via a throwing motion or a dunking motion with the intent to shoot the ball through the hoop or basket to gain points. There are various types of shooting techniques which will require hand-eye coordination and precision from the player to successfully complete a basket. Number three, running. Like in most team sports, running is an integral part of the game of basketball as players will be constantly on the move around a court. Running also helps develop a player's physical endurance, speed, agility, as well as their cardiovascular strength. Number four, passing. Like shooting, Passing is also the act of releasing the ball via a throwing or tossing action, 
The only difference is the intent of passing is to give the ball to someone else during gameplay. Usually as part of the strategy to set up a play for shooting a ball to the basket. Number five, jumping. In conjunction with the basic skills of basketball, jumping is the act of using your lower limbs to propel the body upward against gravity to add force to shots, passes, or dunks. It is also a skill utilized when a defending team tries to block a shot. The health benefits from basketball include, number one, burns calories. Approximately one hour of basketball burns as much as 630 to 750 calories. Number two, builds the body's endurance. Number three, improves balance and coordination. Number four, helps develop concentration and self-discipline. Number five, helps tone the muscles. Looking at the physique and performance of today's top NBA stars and football players, you may wonder how these athletes maintain their muscular builds with very low body fat percentage. How do they maintain explosive energy to last an intense game? Stamina factors in greatly in determining your performance. Your ability to sustain energy in sports, such as football and basketball, is fueled by nutrition. Do not underestimate the role nutrition plays in acquiring maximum physical development. What you eat regularly helps to determine body fat levels, as well as how much energy you will have. Here are some basic dietary recommendations for those participating in intense sports activities. Number one, determine your weight goal. Eat five to seven small meals throughout the day. The size of a meal depends on the actual goal, weight loss versus weight gain, as well as level of activity, whether you're about to have a game that day or an intense training. Most basketball players are tall and slender and are looking to add muscular body weight. In order to gain weight, you must consume more calories than you expend on a daily basis. This means if you are looking to put on weight, you must eat more. Now, if you're looking to reduce body fat, you must consume fewer calories than you expend. This is done by controlling portion sizes and watching what you eat. Number two, drink plenty of water. You've probably heard this over and over, but it is really important that you get adequate amount of water and electrolytes. When you are training intensely, your body depends on good hydration to successfully perform and recover. It is recommended that you drink six to eight glasses or 64 ounces of water per day. Drink two glasses of water several minutes before engaging in intense physical activity. Drink a glass of water every 15 to 30 minutes during workout sessions and during games. As a general rule, keep a water bottle with you during the day to help you monitor water intake and to be sure that liquid is readily available for you. Also, if you drink any caffeinated beverage, make sure to drink water after. Caffeine is a diuretic, which will cause dehydration. Number three, what to avoid eating. Let's start off first with what you shouldn't eat. Young people are inclined to eat fast food or consume sodas and other high fructose drinks. Overprocessed food, especially sodas, have performance inhibitors. You're eating food that is overprocessed and made for mass production. Sodas are some of the biggest performance inhibitors out there. 
the high level of sugar and carbonation forces your body to work harder and takes energy from you rather than providing the energy you need. Therefore, you can't perform at your peak. If you simply cut out these two items, you'd be a lot better off nutritionally. You also want to avoid as much processed or packaged food as you can. Examples of this are pre-packaged or microwave dinners. The more processed the food, the less real nutritional value it has. You can get your daily requirement of nutrients through everyday food. There's no need for supplements as excessive intake may damage your liver. To get lean, you need to eat real, nutrient-dense foods. The base of your diet should never be supplements. That is a costly mistake. If your diet is broken, no amount of supplementation will fix it. It is rare to need the use of supplements. You should most certainly steer clear of performance-enhancing supplements, such as creatine and ephedrine, because of the possible side effects. Limit also the intake of sugar and sodium. Number four, what to eat. You can never go wrong with eating whole, unprocessed foods. Load up with fruits and vegetables. Little steps here and there can go a long way to boost your performance. Carbohydrates provide energy for your body. So if you have a scheduled weight training, sprints, or practice, you'll be needing a good amount of carbohydrates. But on lighter off days, you require fewer carbs. Excess carbs can result to weight gain. After hard workouts, consume at least a 2 to 1 ratio of carbohydrates to protein. Generally, this will be around 40 grams of carbs and 20 grams of protein. Sway towards simple, fast digesting carbs immediately after workouts to spike insulin and increase anabolism. After light workouts, consume a 1 to 1 ratio of carbohydrates to protein. Protein is the most important macronutrient you can eat when trying to achieve a lean physique. It builds muscle while increasing your metabolism so you can continually burn fat. It is suggested that your meal should have at least 20 grams of protein. As a general guide, aim to eat 0.75 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. The majority of your intake should be from real protein sources like beans, chicken, fish, grass-fed beef, eggs, turkey, quinoa, Greek yogurt, and mixed nuts. Within 30 minutes after a workout, you can drink a protein shake or milk to quickly provide a flow of amino acids to your muscles. Here is a sample of a high-protein meal. Here's a quick tuna and rice salad recipe that can be made in 10 minutes to be eaten on the spot or taken on the go. You will be needing the following ingredients. 150 grams of cooked tuna. 125 grams of brown rice, cooked. One cup baby spinach leaves. One tomato, chopped. One half lemon juiced. One teaspoon of olive oil. One small red capsicum, chopped. Chili flakes, optional. Fresh parsley to garnish, optional. Combine the tuna, rice, spinach, tomato, and capsicum in a large bowl and mix well. Add the lemon juice and olive oil, mixing gently to combine them in the bowl. You can serve this with chili flakes and parsley if desired. This serves one. The great thing about this dish is that you can use other prepared fish, such as salmon or sardines, and any other type of salad greens as well. Cold therapy. Cold therapy is a muscle therapy utilized by many pro athletes and coaches. It involves directly applying a cold source, usually ice, to aching muscles after a period of intense activity. 
The rationale behind cold therapy is that the cold helps reduce muscle swelling after an intense workout. After you work out, your muscle needs time to repair itself. The body does this with the help of the red blood vessels, which carry oxygen around your body and muscles. The red blood cells are also responsible for removing lactic acid, the waste product produced when intense muscle activity is involved. Too much lactic acid results to poor muscle function and can lead to muscle fatigue. Introducing your muscles to a lower, colder temperature not only reduces swelling, but also forces the red blood cells to tighten, thus causing them to flush out lactic acid more rapidly. Methods of Cold Therapy The most basic method of cold therapy requires no more than applying ice near a sprained area. Usually, the ice is placed in a bag or wrapped in a cloth and is placed directly over sore or sprained muscles. Number two. Another method that some athletes use is the cold bath, which, as the name implies, is a bath where one dips his or her body in ice or very cold water. The low temperature of the bath will lessen swelling of the whole body. Why it works. After a workout, your body needs to repair itself to prepare for the next training session. It does so with the help of blood vessels that bring oxygen to your muscle tissue while removing waste products of exercise like lactic acid. Too much lactic acid buildup can cause your muscles to function poorly and will often lead to fatigue. When you sit in an ice bath, or when you rub a cup of ice on the muscles you just strained, the cold causes your blood vessels to tighten. This helps drain the lactic acid out of your tired muscles. When you get out of the bath, your muscle tissue warms back up, causing a return of oxygenated blood to help your muscles recover. Be warned though that caution must be taken when taking cold baths. Being exposed to the cold for too long may cause hypothermia. It is recommended that baths be limited to short dips for first-timers, which is a maximum of 10 minutes. When your body is used to the cold, you can stay for longer periods, but not for more than 20 minutes. Physical activity, especially if you're committed to a team sport, requires an overall wellness program to maximize results. The program will demand you to watch your diet daily. What you put in your body will affect your overall energy. It will also be wise to schedule your trainings so your body can condition for a game. Don't forget that you will need enough rest also for your body to recover from the intense training. Being an athlete requires self-discipline. The good thing about this is you have your teammates who are also undergoing the same program. So you have some kind of support group to help you in watching your diet and your training. If you are in it just for fun and to have physical activity, team sports are an engaging way to stay fit while spending time with your friends or making new ones as well. Spend some time off your usual routine and set aside time for a good game of ball. Ask around, or better yet, start an after-office basketball league with your colleagues. So be ready. Let's get set and play some ball, and we'll see you on the next episode.